Hello and welcome to Hobbyking.com. Stuart here with one of my penultimate announcement dailies. This is for, well, you can see it in front of me, this is a T28, but it's not quite the T28 that you are used to with Durafly. This is the version 2 of the T28. Now, this is an announcement daily, so what I'm going to do is just give you a, a relatively brief overview of uh, the spec and features of this uh, V2 T28. It really is quite a different ship entirely. Uh, and also, we've got a little bit of flying footage, a little bit of uh, additional bonus footage of one of the new features in action. Uh, so you can look out for that in this video as we go through the announcement. But then in just a few weeks' time, because this is a bit of a surprise release for Durafly, uh, the first part of 2017, in just a few weeks' time, we will uh, drop the a launch daily because this model is very very close to being in all warehouses so you can enjoy this very very soon. Now carrying on with the tradition of Durafly models, uh, Warbirds that is, this is again 1100 millimeter wingspan. Uh, this is now purely for a 4S setup. Um, many of our models before have been 3 and 4S setup but I found with this the 4S was really the ultimate setup. It certainly gives superior performance and everybody's got 2200 4S's now. Uh, as terms of features, uh, as I said the spec is pretty much the same size wise but features it's really a completely different level. The finish first of all is um, far, far superior than any of the uh, earlier uh, Durafly Warbirds that we put out there um, from that era. Um, you'll see that it's a very nice uh, yellow and authentic US Marines scheme. This is not just a T-28 with a generic uh, uh, marking and generic yellow scheme. This is actually a fully authentic US Marine Corps uh, yellow scheme on this T-28. But that's just the small details, the really, really nice details. Uh, first of all, it's got LEDs as it did with the original one. But if I turn it over, this is where it really starts to sing. You see that it retains, obviously, the flaps and ailerons and the tricycle undercarriage. This is, of course, steerable tricycle undercarriage. It retains the main nose door, but what it's got now are these gear doors on the mains. And not only that, it's actually got a functioning die brake, some very, very cool features. Uh, also, whilst I've got it here, you can see that we've moved the elevator servo right to the tower. That gives you a nice, good um, direct link to the control surface for a good, solid response on that surface. And what I can do now that I've got it turned up and I've got the radio on and I've got it uh, in safety mode with the motor, I can cycle all of these cool new features so you can see them in action. So first of all, we have the gear. See how the gear doors work there seamlessly and notice that there's no additional servo um, with this system. This is a system that we first pioneered. Um, others have used it now, but we first pioneered this spring system and it works very, very well. There you go. Then of course you've got the die brake there. I've slowed this servo down. Um, you will need to do the same on your radio too. Uh, adds a really nice scale feature, but actually it makes uh, flying with the die brake on very, very interesting. It's actually a lot of fun, so you can really get those good authentic carrier dive approaches or dive bombing approaches that they would have typically used the die brake for uh, in real life on this trailer. So I'll just put that up again. And then, of course, we've got the flaps, which I can cycle easily here. They go down to a good 80 to 85 degrees, and then they are full up. I'm just going to put them in mid again there. And, of course, you've got the ailerons working. So if I bring it down, we'll go over some of the other features. Now, that's the scale part of the T28, the, the V2 T28. Certainly an important aspect of it, but something that I think you will really enjoy, and certainly it's something that you haven't seen on any 1100 mil uh, offering from anybody out the box up until now, is the canopy. And not specifically the canopy, because it's just the canopy uh, to all intents and purposes, but if you lift it off, you'll see it's magnetically held, so you need to squeeze it a bit there. You'll see there's no pilot in there, but what there is, is this mounting module. If I slide that out. Now this is actually a FPV pan and tilt mounting system. And if I just put that away now, I've actually got an FPV canopy prepared for you here. Uh, and you can see it's got the pan and tilt uh, Fat Shark 700 TV lights pan and tilt system in there. Also, you'll notice a really nicely detailed sticker for the uh, control panel there. Now, to give you an idea of what this is like in real terms, here's some footage of the model flying, and we've got the FPV onboard camera mixed into that footage as well. What it does, it really gives you an immersive experience. You wouldn't typically expect a model of this size to be able to handle the FPV, but there's plenty of room in the back here for the VTX, and there is plenty of room for this uh, pan and tilt system in this really nice bulbous canopy. And as you can see from the footage, it's actually a very good picture for the size, and it really adds an interesting and very uh, realistic aspect to this size of Warbird. So that's another first from Durafly. 
Now, before I replace the uh, normal canopy, I'm going to put the FPV canopy down. I will note that you do only get one canopy in the box. You just get that mounting module for that. So I've got the cockpit and the fuselage, sorry, uh, open and the battery hatch off the canopy hatch, if you like. Now, what you can see here is that uh, it's very spacious inside the uh, VTX, uh, the FPV VTX that I mentioned, can just install very nicely in the back here, uh, nearer to the uh, center of the wing, and then it won't play around with your CG that much. I've got a 2200 Forest. You can fit up to a 2700 Forest in there. No problems, bags of room. Up the front here, you can just see that is the Aerostar 40 amp ESC. And then I've got, uh, in this case, a eight channel receiver uh, installed here. Now what you'll also note, you can probably just see it in the shot here, all the way along this fuselage uh, is a carbon fiber reinforcing long rods or rods. So in spite of that open space there, it's actually very, very strong. Um, but all up over the original T28, it only, it only maybe adds an extra 50 grams or so because we've gone with a lighter, less dense foam, but still retained a very good finish. And yet we've still been able to add all of these scow features and also FPV features too. So all in all, it's a great improvement over the last one, a really, really good package. It still flies just as well and especially now on that 4S system it is a bigger motor than before as well. So that is the Duraflyer T28 V2 1100mm uh, coming to you in just actually a few weeks time before the BF109. Like I said it's a bit of a surprise release um, and we will look forward to you enjoying this and we're going to bring you more footage of this in weekly updates to come because the guys in New York have got one as well. You won't be seeing me on that because obviously uh, I'll be departing Hobby King, but those guys will uh, carry on. And also our new Durafly brand manager, Steve, who you'll see in this week's weekly update. I'll give you an introduction. He'll be carrying on and pushing this through to market for you guys. So until the next time, I'll see you then.